He got all enraged, came up, said, who the f*** you talking to? Bam! Right in my face. Colors changed. I'm surprised I got another concussion. What's the name that came back on the call? Comes back to an Alan Ganter. Is he pressing charges against me? Like for breach? An ordinary commute turns violent for one Connecticut man when he encounters an off-duty police officer at a red light. Is this civilian up against impossible odds when reporting the road rage of one cop to another? Two men are locked in a war of competing stories filled with shocking twists, and no one anticipates that the ultimate truth will come in the form of a car's dash cam. Is I yelled well, at stuff for assault because you hit him. He's saying that I hit him. Yeah. Let me get your badge number. Want to get arrested? Shortly after noon on December 8, 2023, a man calls 911 with a bizarre story of sudden violence on the streets of Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Rocky Hill, 911, Seattle, just a emergency. I was just assaulted by a police officer who punched me in the face through my window. He was off duty, he got out, flashed his badge, and then he came up to me with an attitude and hit me right in the face. What is your name? Thomas Procuglio. And was he white, black, Hispanic? White. All right, I'm going to have an officer head over there. Is his vehicle still there? He flew into the parking lot. I wasn't trying to follow him, but I didn't see where in the parking lot he went. Okay, I'm going to have somebody come out and speak to you, okay? Just stay in the vehicle. If you do see him again, just call us back on 911, but don't um, engage with him, okay? Yep, no problem. With police on their way, Brocuglio calls a colleague about the assault, adding in a few new details about the violent encounter. As you'll hear in the following clip, the call is caught on his dash cam, which also shows his canine passenger. Hello. 300 Hello. Feet. Turn right towards Connecticut 3 South. I'm going to be a little while. Okay. You know my luck. Sitting at a red light, some guy's sitting in front of me. I honk the horn. He jumps out of the car, is flashing his badge, saying he's an off-duty cop. He comes up, saying this, that, takes the license plate, then goes to get back in his car, and then and like rages out, comes over, punches me in my face, and now I'm waiting for the cops to come. Jesus. Christ. Uh, okay. All right. Yep. All right. You all right? Yeah. All right. Let me know what happens. Rocky Hill police meet Brocuglio at a nearby shopping center and get the full story of the altercation. Did you say that the, the other vehicle pulled in here? He pulled in, but I think he just pulled in over there to whip out of here. It turned around? Yeah. All the things he just pulled in, turned around, and pulled back out again. Doesn't believe he sold me a lot. Yeah, for me to get up. Yeah. So, get me right here. Do you need a ambulance or anything? No. So what, what happened? Where, where uh, we were at that light down there past Dunga Donuts. He was in front of me. It was, you know, red light. Going this way? I was coming out, turning to go this way, to go down here. Right? So you were on France Street, like Cumberland what was on your right? Yes, correct. Okay. And I was sitting there. He was in front of me. You said you were in the right-hand lane? Correct. Okay. Turning. He was in the right-hand lane in front of me, turning at the red light. He was doing whatever he was doing. I just gave him a little horn tap, you know, and tell him to go because there was... Because it was green? It was a red oh, light, red light but, but right on know, right. nobody's coming. So then he decided to jump out, flash his badge, come back, take the picture of my plate. And then he came back up, said, you know, I'll see you with the court or see you with the ticket. Blah, blah, blah. Started walking to his car, asked him for his badge number since he wanted to flash his badge number to me. He got all enraged, came up, said, who the f*** you talking to? Bam! Right in my face. It should be noted that Bercuglio's story has stayed remarkably consistent through three separate retellings. The officer tries to uncover the identity of this off-duty cop. Did you were able to see the badge, like the, 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 what the part made or anything, or was it yeah, silver, no. gold, gold? Yeah. You know, about what time this was? Like right before you called it? Yeah, two, five seconds before I called 911. What's the name that came back on the call? Comes back to an Alan Ganter. With the new information in hand, the responding officer heads back to his unit to make a call. Hey, is that any name you know? Yeah, that looks like he might be uh, a thorough. Police trace the name back to a school resource officer, and it's not long before they uncover more about his identity. Matt just did a search uh, to see what, what town he's from. The name definitely matches Alan Ganser. You want me to get a written statement from this guy? Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna get Pat a call and see what you just sent me the list of the uh, SROs. I don't know what what he is for though. You got the picture I sent? Yeah. Okay. Does that match? Uh, I didn't check like a DMV I'm photo. I'm, I'm rolling up to you right now. All right. You have uh, I just grab your license. And I'm oh, I left my phone. I'm gonna grab a photo and then grab a uh, a written statement from you. Yeah. As the police gather evidence from the accuser, another piece of vital information comes out about the alleged assailant. 
name that he found is out of Meredith. Obviously, yeah, it's very fine, but uh, helps her. Do you want me Alan to do this here or bring him to the stage? Whatever you feel more comfortable with. I didn't know if just you wanted to have it recorded, you know. No, nah, you can get your body cam, so enough. yeah, if you're comfortable doing it here, that's fine. Yeah. I'll go do some research on this and see if it's the same guy. Police dig for more information on the suspect, while Bercuglio makes it clear that he's not taking the incident lightly. I may should have asked ahead of time, and I'm assuming you want to pursue charges. Okay. Be sure to include, too, that when you got hit, if it caused you any pain or anything like that. Yeah. Colors changed. I'd be surprised if I got another concussion. With Bercuglio's statement in hand, the officer decides to grab one more piece of evidence. Are you sure you're okay? I just want to take a look, make sure it didn't... Uh... Take another picture. It means it got a little redder. It's like you wake up tomorrow or later tonight. It's all black and blue and everything. Feel free to take a picture. And sure. like I said, my email's on the card. Okay. You can send that to me. All right. Appreciate it. Before leaving, an ominous possibility occurs to the cop taking Brocuglio's statement. Does this come back to your address? This uh, plate? To the business. Okay. Total protection. Where is that? Enfield. Enfield. But it's not your home. The plate I gave you for the complainant, has it been run recently like since the incident? The responding officer is concerned that Ganter has used police resources to track down his accuser. Since all they know about him thus far is that he's allegedly violent, this could have serious implications for Bercuglio's safety. Interestingly, when they meet up with Alan Ganter at his residence, they find that the license plate is on his mind as well. All right. I'm debating whether to say how you doing, because I'm here. Well, <laughs> I understand why. Yeah. Pete Vanter. Al- Al- Meredith PD. Pete Vanter. When they pulled up, I said, because what I was going to do was I'm off today for the weekend. Yeah. And basically what I was going to do was I was going to ask my supervisor to call my lieutenant and say, this is what happened. I have the plate. Do I have you guys run it or do I call Rocky Hill and say, this is what happened. Have them run it and speak to the guy's supervisor. I got out of the car, you know. Yeah. Whatever you want. I'll give you a sworn written statement, whatever it is. Yeah. And why, don't I I, this photo. why don't I grab some, so, uh, some forms and yeah. you, can, you can write it out for me. Yeah. Whatever All right. So. Ganter, who was awarded the rank of corporal the year prior, seems confident that it's all a big misunderstanding. However, it quickly becomes clear that he is the one misunderstanding the situation. Is he pressing charges against me? Like for breach? Yeah. Like because I yelled well, at him and stuff? for assault, because you hit him. He's saying that I hit him. Yeah. Ganter is stunned to hear this, but what he doesn't know is that Thomas Bercuglio's statement came with an added surprise. He was alone? He was alone. I got a dash cam too, so it's... Uh, are you able to pull up your dash cam? I mean, I, I'm just asking uh, if It's you... got an SD card, so not right now. My computer is... Uh, but I, you'd be able to give me the SD yeah. card? Yeah. This changes things, a fact Ganter seems to grasp almost immediately. He's saying that I hit him. Yeah. And he has video that you hit him. He has videos you still, that I want to, you still want to give me a statement? Well, here's the thing. I'm going to cooperate in a minute or I can. Mm-hmm. Listen, I've been doing this job for almost 25 years, okay? But I probably should have to call my supervisor, my union delegate, whatever it is. You want to give him what a is he? What, what, so he's saying that I hit him? Yes. Okay. And he has a red mark on his face? This side. Yeah. And there's nothing where I can press for, for breach of peace for him yelling at me, whatever it is, or it's just... Well, I, I can tell you, I've seen the video, so yeah. I know he didn't yell at you. Well, well, I can hear him it, tooting it, his horn. Okay. It's front and back. Okay, did you show him doing the double finger when he, I said, listen, yeah. I'm an officer, he I can't turn the, on he red? the finger. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You want to call? Yeah. Your so what is it? So you're going to, you're going to, what, charge me with? Well, right now it looks like assault. Okay. I, I don't think there's anything else. So what I'm saying is. I don't know if I'm charging you with anything right now, but I'm here to get your side of the story. Okay. You, oh, you're saying you're just by warrant? You're not going to. I don't know. I, okay. I got to call my boss after I talk to you. Okay. So. All right. I'm going to do everything in the top right here. It's very frustrating, but let me... Um... Ganter now realizes that the officer hasn't only watched the dash cam footage already, but that the video is even more comprehensive than he thought. And there is an interior camera. I don't... This is, this is my father's van. Okay. Uh, so there might be both sides of the video, forward facing and in okay. the cab. Procublio's dash cam footage shows everything leading up to the incident, as well as the altercation itself. Whether or not there's enough blame to go around will be for police to decide. The footage that follows is the full video captured that day. What are you doing? 
Play it off day. Oh, 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 oh. Really? Where does it say that? It says stop here on red. You're the one sitting on your phone doing all this. I wasn't on my phone. Really? No, I wasn't. Yeah, I saw you looking no, down doing everything phone. else. There's a bit of irony in the fact that the dash cam footage does show that Bercuglio was in fact on his phone. But as the footage also captures, this is the moment everything goes wrong. I don't know. I was moving something in my bag. Okay, well. And I'll see you with a ticket and I'll call your supervisor. Sure, sounds okay. good. Let me get your badge number. <laughs> You want to get arrested? You're going to get arrested yeah. for assaulting a yeah. civilian. The dash cam footage speaks for itself, but Ganter hasn't seen it yet. He believes there may still be room to push a different narrative. Okay, it's, did you show him doing the double finger when he, I he, said, listen, yeah. I'm an officer, he I can't gave, turn on red? the finger. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My fault. Come on. I should have just not even been able to tell. Yeah, he's just being such a I show him my badge. I'm like, I can't turn on red here. There's traffic. He said, well, get off your phone. I'm like, I'm not on my phone. Oh boy. I'm wrong for what I did, sir. Okay. Yeah. My question is this, though. Because he's yelling at me and I actually show my badge, he's giving me the double finger. I mean, I know it's trivial, but does he get hit with like breach or whatever it is or nothing? Or it's just, it's all on me because I got out of the car to take a picture of his plate and then I did what I did. Yeah. No. I understand. Yeah. To be determined. Okay. All right. While the law in Connecticut prohibits the use of abusive or obscene language or gestures in public places as a breach of peace, giving someone the finger is considered protected speech under the Constitution. Therefore, although the statute exists, it cannot legally criminalize this action. Because of this, arresting or ticketing the driver based on him flipping off the officer would have been a violation of the driver's constitutional rights, and Officer Ganter is out of line for attempting such a tactic. However, it is important to note that making threats in addition to such such gestures alters the situation, as threats are not protected speech. Without giving Ganter much hope of countercharges, the responding officer calls this sergeant to let him know how things are going with the suspect. Um, he says he's going to cooperate, but he's calling either his lieutenant or his union delegate, and he's saying, you know, he says, like, the guy says I hit him? I'm like, yeah, and you did. You know, I let him know, so. He said something about, like, he wants to, like, you know, maybe do a breach against the other guy for throwing the bird. Ganter's desire to see Bercuglio charged may be a long shot, but he has another reason why police might want to go easy on him. Just to ask you, sir, one-on-one, because, -on -one, like I said, I'm going to fully cooperate whatever uh -huh. it is, and I threw it, but it wasn't a hard punch, so it's like, I know you may have a mark whatever it is, but it's like, is it going to be a breach or a soft third, or, because I know there's a difference when you have severe injury to when you have breach when people are well, just fighting I, whatever it is. Just between you and I, like I said, it's, you know, he's being whatever it is, my fault for not having self-control is he's doing the double finger, whatever it is. I'm like, I'm, I wasn't on my phone, but my thing is the punch wasn't that hard. Because I understand, like, we do this stuff all the time, so that's my question is that, is it just going to be a simple breach or is it going to be a sole third? Because mm -hmm. I have nothing on my hands. This is all dry from, you mm -hmm. know, whatever it is, so... The officer doesn't give Ganter any hints as to the official charge, but he does photograph his hands as evidence. They're dry from, uh... Having collected the photos, the officer turns his attention to another important matter. Well, you said it's in your truck, your firearm? It is off-duty, yeah. and it's in its holster, Yeah, and it's in a duffel bag that you saw. That, that There's a blue gym bag on the bottom. And did you have that with you uh, when this happened? Yeah, all my stuff was, was in the truck, but I didn't touch that all. Okay, I, no, I, no, I'm just asking. I'm yeah, just yeah, asking. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. The officer lets his sergeant know that Ganter's cooperation will only extend so far. Just so you know, he talked to his union rep, and he's not going to give a statement at this time. I mean, do you plan on... I'm going to talk to the I'm just going based on union. I've never been to this before. But I'm saying, are you going to, like, talk to your union guy more and then possibly, you know... Absolutely. I mean, like I said, I have to call my captain and everybody yeah. and let them all know what's going on. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I'm doing I can't cooperate. I'm just telling you right now, based on what they call me back, was I told them I gave you a verbal account. We're yeah. responsible. But they just said, at this point, before I meet with a union lawyer, not to put anything in writing. Okay. No disrespect to you, sir. No, I, I got you. Job, I got so, you. I understand. I apologize for... Uh, no, no. He was out for that 27 
Ganter seems to remain in a good mood, which can only improve when he speaks to the Rocky Hill sergeant, who tells him that he won't be immediately arrested. Ganter responds by again downplaying the incident. So what we're going to do, um, we're actually going to get this uh, by warrant. I'm going to just give this time for you to talk to the rest. Okay. Based on what guidance you get from them, if you're allowed to come and give a statement, we can set that up. And that way we give you the most respectful process possible. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that, sir, and I'm also very, I um, apologize for wasting your time because uh, family, I understand. So. I'm sorry, sir. Mike, just one question for you is I know you have to do yes. everything by the you know, thing, but here's my concern is that I'm wrong for what I did, but because we deal with this all stuff on my, you know, narrative, it wasn't that hard of a punch. So my whole thing is I just need to know what I need to tell, like, my supervisors, like, is this going to be like a simple breach for me throwing that? Or is this guy trying to claim, like, whatever with a sole third or whatever it was? Because I understand it may be a slight mark, whatever it is, but it wasn't a hard punch. You know what I'm saying? So the charges, did, I'm just saying because... Um, Sergeant Smith assures Ganter that the process will address those concerns, which leads Ganter to once again test out his second tactic. And one of the things you too, sir, not to interrupt, but when I was asking your officer here, is that obviously I'm at fault what I did getting out of the car, but there's nothing in terms of me giving you a statement. If I was to give a statement like towards him, what he said to me with the double finger and after I showed the badge and that was in the call supervisor, there's nothing in terms of him and breach if he reported everything inside his cabin. Because he was very disrespectful and swearing back at me and stuff, I think. Well, I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, I would I can, I would get very That's not scary. Understood. Okay. Sorry to waste your time, then. I'm sorry. The arrest, if there is to be one, shall be postponed to a later date. In the meantime, Ganter has one last chance to outline his biggest concern. Anything else? I, anything, any other questions for me? Anything? No, no, I, I understand. Yeah, so, so, I got it. All right. So, don't take it as disrespect towards you doing your job that, you know, calling you. I've never no, look, been in a situation like this before, so it's... Neither have I, yeah. like, from this side. So, I mean, yeah. listen, yeah. I, you know, I want to make it as painless so, as possible. I just want to make sure that I want to make sure that, you know... Charges that, like yeah. I said, I, I'm responsible, but that he's not going to try to make this into some type of, like, major thing. It, it's, 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 it's a thing. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm responsible, but the... Uh, Ganter may be in an unfamiliar situation, but this isn't the first time he's faced backlash. The Hartford Current conducted a review and found that the Meriden Police Department had far more complaints filed against it than Connecticut departments of similar size. Ganter himself had five complaints against him, more than all but two of his colleagues. That review was done in 2011. Ganter's statement, or lack thereof in this case, has come to an end, but the officers on scene have some parting remarks. Wasn't you didn't see the video. <laughs> I'm like, and when he said that, I said, I'm like, Sorry. The dash cam video may hold the truth, but filming yourself is a double-edged sword. The footage also captures Bercuglio waiting for police to arrive, time he spends replaying the altercation with a different outcome. Kills him right there. What? Uh, that's 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 Should have bit him. Should have killed him. F him up. If the dog has opinions on the situation, she keeps them to herself. Without that input, law enforcement officials came to their own resolution and a warrant was issued for Ganter's arrest. The middle school SRO turned himself in 12 days after the incident and was charged with breach of peace and assault in the third degree. In addition to the charges, Ganter was permanently removed from his assignment as a school resource officer, according to the Meriden Police Department. An internal investigation concluded that Ganter violated the police Police Department's Code of Conduct, which led to him being suspended for five days without pay. Ganter will also be required to attend de-escalation training for the next three years. Ganter told investigators that he, quote, phased out during the altercation and was not aware that he had hit Percuglio until feeling something on his hand. At that point, he remembers thinking, oh my God, what just happened? He acknowledged wrongdoing, however, saying it was a moment of, quote, just plain stupidity. Ganter was given accelerated rehabilitation by the court. If he completes the program without further incident by by January 2025, the charges will be dismissed.